Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about a relatively new feature found in On One Photo Raw 2025 that I think many people aren't taking full advantage of. That new feature is called Brilliance AI. The reason why I say that many people aren't taking full advantage of this feature is because I believe many people feel that this is just a one-click auto button and many people don't want anything to do with auto. They want to manually edit their images from start to finish. Well, Brains AI is actually a lot more than that. And in today's video, I want to explain to you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, before I do, I do want to mention very quickly that I am one of the instructors in this great On One conference called On One Unleashed. Uh, if you're interested in this conference, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. There's a lot of great instructors. I'll be teaching two different uh, courses in this conference. Now, as far as Brilliance AI, it will take care of the most obvious issues of your image, and that will save you a lot of time. For example, I have this image. It's underexposed. I purposely underexposed it because I didn't want to blow out the highlights, the clouds. But as soon as I click on Brilliance AI, you'll notice that it takes care of that issue. Also, it was a raw file, and it was a little, like, washed out. It wasn't very colorful, so it increased the saturation as well. Now, by all means, if you're happy with this the way it is, stick with it. But this will really give you now a better starting point to edit the image. So I could come in, and if I want to just jump to tone and color, and I look, and you can see it's moved some sliders here. I don't like it. I think it's a little too bright, though, so I could, like, bring this down a little bit, and then maybe it highlights up a little bit and bring the blacks down there a little bit. So I'm kind of touching up what it did. Also, if we take another look at Brilliance AI, we'll notice, you'll notice that it did some local adjustments as well. It did masking for the flora. So it did a flora adjustment and it did masking for the sky. So it did a sky adjustment. If you want to see those adjustments, go over to the local tab and you'll notice at the top, we have a mask for the flora and this will only affect the flora. So you can see that. And then below that, we have the sky, and it has a mask for the sky, and this adjustments here will only affect the sky. So you could come in and touch these up. Also, because they're masks, you could easily copy these masks and paste them to filters or effects that you want to use. For example, let's say I want to add dynamic contrast just to the sky. Well, I could click on this mask to bring up the mask properties, then go to this icon right here. This is the copy icon. So I'm copying this mask to the clipboard. Then I could go over to effects and I could add a filter, dynamic contrast. Now, as it is now, it will be applied everywhere. So if I turn it up, you see how it's being applied everywhere. If I click on the little mask icon and then click on the paste icon right here, it will paste the mask so it's only affecting the sky. Now you can see it's only affecting the sky. So we'll do that. So you could save a lot of time. It's a really, in my opinion, as far as Brilliance AI is concerned, it's a great way to get to a better starting point. And then you could touch it up as I did here. thought it was a little bit too bright, so I made it a little darker. And then I um, added a little more contrast by making the whites and the highlights a little brighter and the shadows and the blacks a little darker and then I did I copied the masks so I could add dynamic contrast to the sky I could go over and use the super select AI tool and once it figures out what is what I could come in here and let's say click on the uh the sculpture so that I'm getting a mask of the sculpture right click and then add dynamic contrast to the sculpture, or in this case, I think I'd rather add a tone enhancer uh, to the sculpture. And then I'm going to open up the shadows. Take a second, there we go. And open up the blacks. And then we'll go down to detail. We'll add more detail to the sculpture and some clarity to the sculpture. 
And then I could finish it off with effects. Go to filter. I'm going to add a global vignette filter. And let's say what Big Softy looks like. And that doesn't look too bad. So we'll go with that Big Softy preset on the vignette. Let's try another one. I just want to show you some other issues you may encounter and other things you could do, which save you a lot of time. I have this image here. This is, again, an unedited RAW file. This happens to be a Fuji file. I'm going to turn on Brilliance AI right away. And you can see what it did. It took care of some of the issues, but it still is a little dark, so I need to fix that. Also, I wanted to show you on the info tab, you'll notice this shot at ISO 800. The reason why I use such a high ISO, at the time I was comparing this, uh, this was an old, this is an older image, by the way. I was comparing a Fujifilm X-T1 to a Sony camera, and I think it was like an A7R12 or something like that. It was like an older camera, or A7R1, I don't remember. It was an old, an older Sony to the older um, Fujifilm, and I was shooting them at various ISOs to compare the ISO set, you know, the ISO rendition of both, both of the uh, cameras. Anyway, there is some noise here. Well, with Brilliance AI, if you go down here to options, you'll notice that there is an option to use something other than Brilliance AI. You could use AI Auto, so you could hover over that, see what that does, and then there's one called AI Match, AI match, you can see that. I'm going to stay with the Brilliance AI. You also could come off of auto white balance if you want, but no noise AI. By default, it's going to be on auto, and it won't get applied to an image such as this that is at ISO 800, but it probably will get applied if you have an ISO like 6400 or 12800 or something like that. But here, I could just manually put this to on, so it will save you some time. You can just Quick, click that very quickly. It does take a second to kick in, but it will take care of the noise on this image. You also have another option here to retouch people's faces. So if there was a person in the shot, you could use Brilliance AI to get an automatic adjustment of the person's face. Obviously, you don't need to do that here. But what I do want to do is brighten this up a little bit. It's a little too dark. So I'm going to go to tone and color. And you can see it didn't move exposure at all. It did take highlights down and whites down, blacks down a little bit, move the other like shadows that just move minimally. But I do want to make it a bit brighter, right? Then I want to go back to Brilliance AI and notice in uh, the regions, in the local adjustments, that it didn't really do anything. So it didn't do any local adjustments at all. It's doing the progress over again. Let do its thing. But you can see it didn't do that, so it didn't add any local adjustments. Well, I still could take care of that. Uh, just go to Effects. I could add a filter, and I could say, like, add a color adjustment filter, as I often like to do with the Flora. And instead of, now I'm doing this, instead of using the Super Select AI brush, I could click on the little mask icon here. I could go to Regions, and I could go to Flora and make sure that I'm painting in the adjustment. So click Apply. So it's super easy then to still get the mask. And I could go to Yellow, and as I typically do, I'll bring the saturation up, brightness up. I'll go to Green, bring saturation up a little bit, and brightness down more. That's not as much green in there, but I could still do it. Um, I do like to use the Super Select AI brush often, though. Like for the sky, I'll click this on. I'll go to the sky, I'll click with the left mouse button, I'll right click, I'll go to um, dynamic contrast, and we'll do a dynamic contrast to the sky, like that. And finally, I could finish it off with a uh, vignette, as I typically do. Let's go to strong. Yeah, strong looks all right. So, there's before. And there's after. So the whole point of this video is consider using Brilliance AI to get you to a better starting point, particularly if you're shooting raw, because obviously a raw file has minimal processing done to it. And Brilliance AI will most often take care of the obvious issues, but it's super easy to touch up. For example, this image, even though I used, um, I used Brilliance AI on it, uh, it was still a bit dark. So I went to tone and color and I brought up exposure. I was able to fix it very quickly. This other image, uh, even though the original unedited RAW file 
was underexposed when I applied the Brilliance AI, for me, it was a little bit too bright. So I went to tone and color and pulled exposure down a little bit uh, to fix that. And then I took advantage of, in this case, since it did local adjustments, I was, e I was able to copy the mask very quickly and then paste the mask and to tone enhancer or, or the dynamic contrast or whatever it is I wanted to uh, do adjustments to that same area. And so it's super easy to use. It's very versatile. And I think that you might want to consider taking advantage of the features it has so that you could uh, get a better edit and a quicker edit, an overall edit on your image. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.